they ain't believe me. These niggas die to me. Look what I'm becoming. I did it, made a man of me. All the that I did, I swear my mother. What it do, YouTube? It's Tom Fetty with the Fetty. Back and try another video, man. Y'all know why we here. To handle business, but before we handle that business, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. I'm going to say it again. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. I'm going to say it one more. Matter of fact, like, comment, subscribe. Before I got to beat you up, y'all know what's going on. We got another Swamp Stories. If you know about Swamp Stories, you know it's going to be a banger. I love reacting to the Swamp Stories, man. It's, it's entertaining, bro. It gets you hip and put you on. You know, you, you might not know about California, but Swamp Stories going to get you hip. You might not know about Baltimore. Swamp Stories going to get you hip. So with that being said, we got the... Eight Trey Crips versus BGF. How one man obliterated BGF in Baltimore. We about to tap in. Let's get it. All information is accumulated. Damn, I didn't even get to read it. Some incidents are still in trial. This is not a. This is not. Oh wait, wait, wait. Welcome, bro. No, 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 no. Cause I just found it so slow, mo. No, 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 no. Yeah, we gotta do that again. All information is accumulated from U.S. Document. Okay, some incidents are still in trial. This is not a witness re recount. Everything is alleged by the federal government in Maryland. Welcome back okay, to boom. another Let's get episode it. of Swamp Story. Let's get it, man. In this video, we head back to I ain't slow, y'all. I can read. Again. That shit just I know moving you may be fast. You're seeing this city, but there's honestly so many wild stories that I may have to cover them all. And yeah, for this you one, do. we cover a strange organization, nothing like I've ever seen before. This is wilder than LA on paper, but for this crew, it was one man doing all the damage. But wait, before we get into it, make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you're new. You Shout out Swamp Stories. The man. Instagram page as well. Excuse me. So let's get into let's it. Let's get it. Baltimore, Maryland, one of the, the three yo. most dangerous cities over the last 20 years. Mm -hmm. Every year, Baltimore, St. Louis, and New Orleans battle for the position, and I don't mean that in a good way. Cities like these dwarf the West Coast when it comes to poverty, crime, and overall dysfunction. However, over the years, LA has had a major influence on the street operations of these places. In the 90s and early 2000s, LA members would travel across the country for business dealings. And in the process, neighborhoods in these other states gained the Piru, Hoover, or Crip affiliations. Well, Baltimore was definitely one of these places. And that's what I'm saying. Like, where I'm from, DMV, DC, the part of Maryland I'm from, we don't got Crips and Bloods. You feel me? Like, we don't got no gangs, bro. It's your neighborhood. You rock with your neighborhood, that's your neighborhood. You in, in Baltimore, though, is real deal gangs, bro. Like, I keep telling y'all, it's two different worlds. Like, it might be 40 minutes away, but I swear to God, it's two completely different worlds, different everything, culture, food, lingo, clothes, everything, bruh, no cap as many of their neighborhoods have affiliations. But the unique aspect is that these names mean nothing and have zero implications. They tried to replicate the structure of LA, but they failed after a very short try. For example, the idea of big homies, OGs, and DPs did not fly in Baltimore whatsoever. I, 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 bro, I don't be lying to y'all, bro. I swear to God, bro. These young niggas don't care. Like, when people keep saying, like, nah. It ain't worse than it was back in the day. Back in the day, it was real life standards and, and morals that you had to follow or you was going to get punished by your by your organization. Nowadays, bro, it ain't no big homies. These young niggas don't care about that old ass nigga. Come on, bro. They'll spank his ass and take over. I'm telling y'all, bro. There's no back. They don't care. They got buttons now, bro. Back in the day, they ain't had no buttons. These young niggas don't care. They off the hook. I'm telling you. Overall, they completely rejected the concept of rank, meaning that a young member had way too much pride to look at another man as exactly. an OG. Exactly. Definitely Feel way me? too much pride to take orders from another man as well. And that's why the DMV as a whole, we going to include Baltimore, don't win. Because that's how everybody think. I don't care if you in the gang or not, bro. If I'm on the street, right, and I'm doing something, and this old head try to come tell me, steer me in the right direction, we going to say, bro. I don't want to hear nothing you guys say, bro. And that's just how we grew up, bro. That's how we, that's just how what we used to, bro. Like, I can't lie. It's the culture. That's why DMV don't win. We don't got no rappers out. Like, all the rappers from the DMV are rappers that don't really represent the DMV. For example, Logic, Corday, Wale. Feel me? Like, we don't, Rico Nasty. Like, we don't, like, we don't really got nobody that's really DC Merlin. You know what I mean? We don't. And this is how I go. We really I don't. 
Just because you tell me that these guys over there are my rival doesn't mean that I have to see them as a rival. This is because historically everything in Baltimore operated on an individual level. So if one guy, guy has a problem with another man from the same neighborhood, there's nothing stopping them from beefing. On the for flip sure. side, if a big homie tells him that he has to be rivals with his friend, he's not gonna go for it. Facts. But for most people in Baltimore, this was just accepted as the way things go. But for one man, he wanted to make a change. Let me introduce you to a man named Trayvon Hall, also known as G. True. Trayvon grew up in West Baltimore, specifically the corner of North Hilton and West Baltimore. West, the worst part of Baltimore, if you ain't know, even over West, the worst spot. corners in the city where numerous rivalries have taken place. Well, True took major pride in his corner, and he wanted to start a crew that could take it over. He loved the idea of being the leader of a feared crew, a man who could tell other men what to do. And that's when he discovered the A Trey Gangster Crips in LA. He heard that they had been the most feared for decades, only to rival the Hoovers. And because the Hoovers already existed in his city, he wanted to set up the A Trey in Baltimore as well. So over the course of the next year, True got in contact with two very important men. First, he drove to New York City to meet up with their A-Tray leader named Biz. He pitched him the idea of starting A-Tray in Baltimore, and Biz approved. However, he explained to him that the man he needs to talk to is all the way in LA, where the trays originated. So that's when he passed him the number of a man nicknamed Big Menace, the leader of the back west set of A-Tray. So after communicating over the phone, True took a flight to LA to meet up with Big Menace. During their meeting, Menace explained the history of A Trey, what they represent, and how they get down. He stressed that fear and domination are their main strengths and that he must instill that in his members. After kicking it some more, the two became close, and Menace was happy to approve G True as the Baltimore A Trey leader. So in 2013, G True returned to West Baltimore and began recruiting. The process took some time, but things started to come together in 2015. Five official A Trey neighborhoods were formed. Before this video, we focus on G True's side. He led the Back West Click, which covered Lexington Terrace and the North Hilton area. Well, in 2015, his squad pretty much stayed out of the way to recruit members. But then in the spring of 2016, everything changed. If you've seen my previous videos, you know that gas stations and corners are very important in the city of Baltimore. Gas stations are primarily locations to sell all kinds of things and once a crew claims one you can pretty much find them there 24 hours a day. Well early on G True decided to have members post up on some very important corners. First was the Sunoco gas station on North Hilton and next was the Lexington Terrace projects. Of course not everyone was thrilled with this especially BGF. At the time, BGF was the most feared in Baltimore, and they happened to claim all of these same corners. Well, after a short while, BGF began noticing these new a tray members on their turf. And in Baltimore, this usually ends in one devastating way. Of but course. thankfully, instead of making a demonstration, BGF simply informed the a tray members to stay off their territory. Even though this was a noble approach, G True was not happy when he heard the news. He wanted to use this as an opportunity to prove a point, to show the city of Baltimore what A Trey is all about. So in May of 2016, True started an iMessage group chat with all of his A Trey members. His first text was asking members to send pictures of BGF members so they all knew who to look for. They sent pictures of two men, Shaheem Brown and Albert Pittman. These are the two West Baltimore BGF members who they believed were the most feared. And that's when True texted the group chat saying that they better bash these two men before they become respected a Trey members. He then said to become a Trey, you must bash a J, referring to BGF's nickname. The texts were directed to four prospective members. Darren Hickman, also known as Chisel, Marcus Williams, also known as Gangster C, Keith Pinson, also known as Gotti, and Alvin Johnson, also known as Jug. So on May 18th, 2016, the men began roaming around West Baltimore looking for the two BGF members. 
On the night of May 18th, Gotti texts the group chat that he spotted Albert Pittman at the basketball courts in Lexington Terrace. The courts happened to be located in the middle of the projects and Gotti claimed that he didn't know how to get in. So True then questioned why he didn't quote blast from the outside. Gotti responded by saying that he didn't want to endanger anyone who wasn't involved. Even though this was a thoughtful and reasonable answer, True was upset and felt like A-Tray members shouldn't care. And that's how it stopped. Y'all, it's like, you know what I mean? When all these innocent bystanders get hit, all the, like, even if somebody do stand on morals and principles, like, bro, we ain't doing that, bro. We trying to walk our Vic down. There's always somebody that's going to be like, nah, that's dead. We shoot and whoever get hit, get hit. And it just caused a snowball effect, bro. No cap. So then he responded to the group by saying, I don't care who's BGF or not. I'm rocking anything I see. see. He expected this careless and reckless attitude to rub off on the other members, but instead they stuck to their morals. But as instructed, they spun around the BGF area for over a month, but no moves were ever made. And that takes us to June 23rd, 2016. It's a Thursday night in West Baltimore and Chisel Jug and Gangster C get in their car. They then head to Lexington Terrace, where they spot Albert Pittman and Shaheem Brown outside. So that's when all of the A-Tray members hop out. <laughs> Thankfully, they hit nothing but plywood and everyone was okay. After hearing the news, G True expressed his frustrations in the group chat. He simply could not believe that they couldn't get the job done. So he decided to give them another month of trying, but they never came through. So finally, in mid-July, uh -oh. True texted the group chat that he would go do it himself. July 18th, 2016. Through an acquaintance, True gets Albert Pittman's location all the way in East Baltimore. The area is controlled by another A-Tray section nicknamed the Nutty North Side. So at 8.30 p.m. by himself, True drives out to the location. He waits in front of the apartment for 15 minutes until Albert walks outside. And that's when he makes his move. Directly after this, True drives home and texts the group chat two simple words, checkmate. This was of course the first A-Tray incident and True hoped that it would set the trend for the rest of the members. But after a couple months passed and nothing had happened, he began getting frustrated. On October 1st, 2016, True contacted his fellow A-Tray leaders in other states. He asked them what to do about inactive members who won't follow directions. The leaders told him to weed out members who didn't follow directions and to only keep those who followed his orders. The only problem was that True had no one who was coming through for him, so that would mean he had to get rid of everyone. So instead, he had to keep to himself about his frustrations and just wait patiently. Nothing would happen for four months and True would go out and do it for himself once again. November 11th, 2016. By himself, True drives to the Lexington Terrace and spins around the block. And this time in front of the food mart, he spots Shaheem Brown. So that's when he parks his car and hops out. Oh, Shawty was dropping buckets. True had now taken out two very important BGF members, and this meant that they were looking for revenge. All of the eight tray members knew this, so they decided to lay low, and that even includes True, if you can believe that. So for three and a half months, they all relaxed. But then in early 2017, bad news would come for A Trey. On February 25th, 2017, True would get a call from a fellow member that A Trey's David Jackson had been rushed to the hospital. He heard that David had been hit in the leg, so he rushes over to the hospital to see if he's okay. After arriving, True learned that it was actually David's doing on accident, and this made him roll his eyes. Hey, of Mo. course, he was relieved that BGF hadn't done this, but Shorty just chatted bobbed himself, man. What? Hey, I ain't gonna lie, bro recruiting some nuts. <laughs> Shawty's suck at recruit. He need to like, hire somebody else to recruit. You know how like colleges and NBA got scouts? He need that, cause he suck. <laughs> you gotta know your lane. I keep telling y'all you gotta know your ass at. If you know your ass at, you're gonna be good. Bro don't know what his ass at. Recruiting is not his thing. He a foot soldier. But on the same token, he was embarrassed that his squad was an absolute mess. Over the coming months, True would really contemplate what he needed to do as a leader. Part of this process was long talks with the New York and LA leaders. He even began writing a book about A Trey and all of their history. Well, after this period, True would jump back into the group. <laughs> his simple message was that if anyone wants to continue being a member, they must quote, swing the hammer. 
This message caused a stir in the group chat with members pointing fingers left and right. Each member began giving excuses on why they haven't been active. Well, True did not want to hear it, so instead he went out to recruit some new members. He quickly found a wild man that reminded him of himself. This would be a man named Deontay Emons, also known as Tip. Deontay had no fear of anyone and he probably had a couple screws loose as well. All of this making him what True believed was the perfect 8-tray member. After becoming an official member, Tay was placed on True's childhood corner. Specifically, Deontay and Maurice Mitch Finney posted up at the Seneco gas station on North Hilton. This is where they hustled and held down the block for G True. Well, with Deontay's wild temper, it was only a matter of time before things went left. And that takes us to July 14th, 2017. It's a regular Friday evening in West Baltimore and Tay and Mitch are hanging out at the Seneco gas station. At 8 p.m. they notice something strange, a couple of men posted up on the other side of the street. So together, Tay and Mitch walk across the street to confront the men. They ask them who they are and what they claim. The men tell them that they represent the Abington crew, a subset of BGF. Their territory is located across the street from 8 Trey, so it only makes sense for them to post up there. Regardless, Deontay gets angry and tells the men to leave the area. One of the men named Christopher Hockaday refuses and stands his ground. Deontay gets extremely frustrated and lets his emotions get the best of him. Bang. Damn. The Abington boys were not happy to say the least as Deontay had no reason to take it this far. After all, the territory belonged to both sides as it was the middle ground between both of their neighborhoods. Well, the Abington boys would not take long to get their revenge. What if I told you that the Abington boys had a member just as wild as G. True and Deontay? Well, his name is Cortez Weaver, also known as Tez, and he was gonna make sure to get his revenge. July 17th, 2017. Tez walks across the street to the Seneco gas station looking for 8-tray members. There he spots Maurice Mitch Finney hanging out outside. So he walks up and without hesitation, bang. Snowball effect, man, all the time. This That's was how I go. Trey's first official loss, and it happened to be one of their only active members. As you would expect, G True was devastated and, of course, furious as well. Mitch was one of his close childhood friends, so this one cut really deep. And even though his side instigated this, he still felt like he was the victim. So the next day, he sent paragraphs to the group chat ranting about what they need to do. He vowed to claim three BGF lives and he needed his members to step up. All of the members talked a good game in the group chat, but nothing would happen for the next month. That's On the morning of August 12th, G they would make an Instagram post vowing to get revenge for his best friend, Mitch. Bruh, they suck. I ain't gonna lie, I'm not here to... You feel me? Stop the violence. You know, it's a better way. But if you're going to do it, do it. They suck. They not doing it. They not dropping no buckets. They Ben Simmons at the line for real. They missing it. Everything. And later that day, he would unfortunately come through with his promise. At 10 p.m., G True calls up Gotti and asks him to bring him his car. He then removes the license plates, hops in the car, and drives over to the Abington territory. In front of the Abington liquor store, he spots a very important man. This would be a member named Theron McClary, a man whose rap sheet is longer than a giraffe's neck. So G True hops out solo once again. Bam. This was a major deal in Baltimore as Theron was an infamous man on the west side. And with this major move, G True hoped that this would inspire other ATRE members. However, 11 months would go by and nothing would take place. And here we are once again, G True thinking he needs to do it all himself. Is it just me or is it like he forcing this, 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 this crip shit, bro? Like, it don't look like it's going the way you want it to go, bruh. Like... Why can't you just be dolo without no gang? And if you want to do that, you do it. But it, the 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 eight tray shit, it ain't your lane. I don't think it's his lane. I don't think like eleven months go by without nothing. That's not normal. Especially if y'all are supposed to be beefing. Y'all ain't on nothing. Y'all is missing. Y'all ain't dropping no buckets. Y'all ain't doing like you know what I mean. And I'm not even saying it for like the reason like of like I'm. If no violence ever happened again, I'm cool with that. It's nothing wrong with that. But it's like he wants it to happen, but it's not happening. So that's why I'm saying this just just drive it, bro. Like you not move to LA, move to New York, and you do your thing out there. Why you got you hear me? Like come on, bro. 
July 6, 2018. It's a Friday night in West Baltimore and the Abington boys are outside of their local market playing dice. The reason they're comfortably outside is because it had been 11 months since anything had happened. And I only say that because in Baltimore that's forever. Well, little do they know, True is having one of those days where he wants to make a statement. So at 10 p.m., True leaves his house and heads down to the Abington area. He then observes the dice game and decides to make a terrible move. <laughs> He actually used the same blower here that he did with the 2017 Thomas McClary incident. Ultimately, this is how police tie the two incidents together. But wait, we're not quite there yet. Throw the gun away, the man. True had gotten the Back West A trade to be one of the most feared sections in the city. This is despite many of his members never popping out. And unfortunately for him, this trend would continue into 2019. Enough was finally enough, and Shrew decided to call an 8-tray leader named Paco Diamonds all the way in LA. Over the phone, he asked the man for advice on what to do about inactive members, and that's when Shrew learned about the infamous DP. True was inspired and wanted to DP a member named Ronnie Finney, also known as Finn. Finn happened to be one of Mitch's closest friends, so after he passed, he vowed to get revenge. Of course, this never occurred, and G. True wanted to punish him. So after his phone call with the LA leader, True informed Finn that he would undergo a DP. Finn refused to oblige, so then True called over another member to help him out. This would be a member named Wrigley Shipley, also known as Crazy. Well, after calling him over, Wrigley decided not to participate. In fact, all of the A-Tray members thought this was a ridiculous idea and wouldn't help out. See? This is when True knew that nothing would come of A-Tray and that he couldn't be like the leaders in LA or New York. By the spring of 2019, he had given up his dreams and decided to let the members do whatever they wanted. For most members, this meant sitting back and chilling, but for one member, it was the complete opposite. This, of course, would be Deontay Emons, and while the other members were sitting in the house chilling, he was outside as wild as ever. And that takes us to March 4th, 2019. It's a Monday night on the A-Tray side of Hilton Avenue. It's a slow day, so Deontay decides to leave the Seneco gas station to go post up on another corner. As he makes his way down, he notices an unfamiliar face on St. Joseph. So Deontay gets curious and approaches the man. He questions where the man is from and what he represents. Deontay then learns that the man has affiliations with BGF. That's when the two get into an argument, and sadly, Deontay takes it to the next level. <laughs> Deontay then fled the scene on foot and was able to get away. But then the next day, an A-Tray member named Smuppy would send a picture of Tywin Smith to the group chat with a question mark. True and Deontay would both respond, confirming it was them. And to make things worse, later that day, they would both take it to social media. Deontay would make an Instagram post pretty much bragging about what he had just done. And True would leave a comment that said, no attempts, meaning that Tay always gets the job done. At this point, Deontay and True felt untouchable kind of like they were evil twins. But as the two distinguished themselves from a Trey, one member would decide to step up. This would be Wrigley Shipley, also known as Crazy. And this guy would surprise True with a text in May of 2019. But first, let me set the context. As I stated in the beginning, five different a Trey sections formed in Baltimore, one of which being Nutty North Side. At the beginning, the Back West and Nutty North Side were allies, but in typical Baltimore fashion, they began beefing it's over Jesus. territory. After the incident of Albert Pittman, G True wanted to take over the area of East Baltimore. Coincidentally, the Nutty North Side wanted the area as well, given that it's closer to their home turf. Somehow, this simple matter transitioned into a full on A Tray versus A Tray B. And in May of 2019, Wrigley Shipley would volunteer to make a statement. May 25th, 2019. Crazy texts True and asks him to go on a mission with him against the Nutty North Side. Of course, True is ecstatic as no one has ever volunteered like this before. So he instantly agrees and picks him up what at 9 the p.m. <laughs> they drive to East Baltimore looking for any Nutty North Side members. And that's when they spot a member named Daryl Fordham on the 500 block of Force Road. And that's when Crazy hops out. <laughs> This incident shook up everything in Baltimore as all of the A-Tray sets turned against G. True and his squad. Everyone knew that they were wild and never to be trusted again. On top of this, all of the BGF members despised them as well. 
So as you would expect, a tray would pay the cost in a major way. Or maybe not. Let me explain. In July of 2019, True became very upset at Deontay for telling his girl about everything that they had done. He saw this as a form of snitching and he wanted nothing to do with Deontay. He even instructed the other members to stop talking to him and to take his blower away. So that's exactly what they did, leaving Deontay without protection or a squad to hang around. Sadly, Deontay would not last long in the streets of Baltimore. On May 23rd, 2020, Deontay was found outside of Collins Market in the heart of BGF territory. Hey, Mo. To this day, no one knows who did this, whether it was G-True or the BGF side. Regardless, this is a lesson that proves that no matter how many stripes you have, this life will lead to absolutely nothing. Friends who you risked your life for will turn their back on you after the smallest mistake. And the interesting part of this whole situation is that True's concerns about Deontay running his mouth should have been his last concerns. Instead, his own group chat that had every little thing they had done since 2016 like probably should have been his concern. On top of this, after Baltimore police ran across True's social media, they were able to get a warrant to look through his phone. And after finding the group chat, they discovered every little thing they had done since 2015. There was no need for informants or any other proof. This was the easy case closed. And this is ultimately how the Back West 8 tray was taken down. On October 7th, 2020, <laughs> 10 members were in Bruh. <laughs> bruh. Come on, bruh. <laughs> hey, Mo. Nah, Mo, they ain't just get swept like that. That easy. Like in my head, I'm thinking the whole time, like, why he keep texting him? He can't call, like, he can't call. You can't meet up with him. Y'all from the same hood. You keep texting, bro. Like that don't make sense to me, bro. I'm not even in the streets, bro. How I know more than y'all, bro. That don't even like move smart. Like, come on, what? Indicted on all sorts of charges. Due to True's group chat, members who actually didn't do anything were now facing conspiracy charges for texts sent to the group. Life was pretty much over for anyone involved with the Back West A tray. But then wild news would come in September of 2021. Trayvon Hall was released from jail and sent back home to Baltimore. All while his entire crew were still facing life in what prison. What he read? Holy moly! The irony is that while all of the inactive members were going to prison, the man who actually did everything was sitting at home. Everyone was confused on why this happened and a lot of people thought that he snitched. That was until the US Marshals had realized that they had released the wrong person. So just three weeks after his release, Trayvon Hall was sent back to jail on September 27th. That's crazy. That must have been the wildest roller coaster of emotions I can't even imagine. Well, in 2022, Trayvon Hall was sentenced to 37 years for all of his crimes. Wrigley Shipley, also known as Crazy, received 15 years. Then Marcus Williams, also known as Gangster C, received seven and a half years. These niggas got seven. That's not even seven and a half. But he got seven and a quarter for doing nothing. For being on nothing. Y'all ask me why I be by myself. Man, yeah, I, if I got to do some work, I'm doing it dolo, man. Y'all tripping. Niggas about here be tipping. Dead. The other members are either still facing trial or their sentences haven't been published. This is yet another example of why Baltimore is the second most dangerous city in the country. And sadly, it hasn't gotten better. In fact, its homicide rate in 2022 was over 10 times higher than the city of LA. You can probably pin this to the high levels of poverty, but also to the complete dysfunction. In all of my Baltimore stories, it seems like the incidents are really never that deep. And Bruh, it's because these young niggas got switches now, bruh. These buttons is getting 3D printed. You put 3D printing a button for fifty dollars, selling it for 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 eight hundred, bruh. That's a like, I'm telling y'all, bruh. The youngest don't care. It ain't no law. It ain't no moral. It ain't no principle. It ain't no code, bruh. Whatever they want to do, they gonna do it. And you, what you gonna do? Say no? They gonna switch cheese your ass. I'm telling you. With that being said, man, it's time fatty with the fatty. Make sure y'all stay smart, stay dangerous, and I'm gonna catch y'all next time, man. I'm gone.